153 days into Russia's invasion of Ukraine and over 4.8 million people have fled the country. More than half of those refugees have ended up in Poland. The massive exodus has nonprofit, humanitarian and religious organizations pushed to the brink to help the growing tide of refugees. Jonathan Ornstein is the executive director of the Jewish Community Center in Krakow, Poland. Jonathan, so good to see you. Thank you for having me. So your small Jewish center transformed into a humanitarian operation as soon as the Ukrainian refugees began to pour into Poland. Tell us more about what this experience has been like and, and the type of services that you are able to provide. Uh, so the moment we saw what was happening and realized that many refugees would be pouring across the border, we made a decision straight away. One was to do all we could to help people and to not to differentiate, although we're a Jewish organization, we are gonna help everybody equally as much as we could. So straight away, we started to uh, provide services. We understood the greatest need right away was housing. So we've uh, rented hotel rooms, apartments. We have currently over 300 people we're housing. Um, we started a collection center. People would bring food, toiletries, medicine, uh, toys, dog food, whatever, all, all that the refugees would need uh, to our center and that slowly a trickle of re refugees that would come in has become really uh, a, a huge a huge amount every day about 600 people a day are taking uh, taking uh, supplies coming into our center and getting getting supplies we are uh, feeding over a thousand people uh, a day uh, we've opened a safe space for women uh, a daycare for for children we're teaching english we're teaching polish uh, we're giving psychological services, legal counseling. We're sending literally tons and tons of supplies into Ukraine and bringing bringing people out. So we send trucks and buses in uh, with with supplies and then come out and bring food. So doing absolutely both inside Krakow, on the border and uh, inside Ukraine, everything we can do. Well, through your aid, you've described you're helping families, women, children, and they're bringing their pets as well. Jonathan, this weekend, you know, Jews celebrated Passover and you hosted Ukrainian refugees for this celebration. So talk about the significance of the Jewish story of flight and what's happening in Ukraine today? Uh, Jewish people, we as a as a people know what it's know what it means to be strangers. Know what it's mean to be refugees. The story of Passover is a story of Exodus, a story of freedom, a story of a story of uh, of being freed from slavery. And we're particularly mindful of that as a people. And because we know what it meant to be uh, refugees and what it meant to be the stranger, we need to do everything we can to help others when they're in that predicament. So your community center, I mean, it's offering services to not only Jews, uh, but non-Jewish refugees. Tell us why you think it's so important to, to reach out to people of all faiths. Well, our Jewish community, we're in Krakow. And Krakow is an hour's drive from Auschwitz. And our Jewish community was a, a very strong community before World War II. We had 3.5 million Jews. Poland was 10% Jewish. And over 90% of our Jewish community was murdered in the Holocaust. And that happened, one, because there was a dictator that wanted to get rid of the Jews. But it also happened uh, for the large, for, to a large part because the world remained mostly silent. And we are incredibly mindful of this lesson that if the world stood but once stood silent as we were being persecuted, as we were being killed, as genocide was being perpetrated against us, then we have a particular responsibility 80 years later not to be silent when this is happening to others. You just described yours as a small organization, but you're doing big things. How much longer can you sustain you know, fulfilling the need. What do you need in order to keep going? Luckily, the world has been very generous. The Poland has been amazing as a country. Uh, our, our supporters and friends all around the world have, have really helped us. You know, we couldn't do this as a small, small organization. Obviously, uh, we're receiving financial support from all over the world, and we intend to do this for as long as it takes. Uh, whatever the needs are, we will try and do our best to provide them. Uh, we we understand that uh, that we are on the front lines, and it's up to us. And these people need so much help. Uh, these people have nothing. They're coming across the border with with backpacks, women holding holding children, and we need to absolutely step it up and make sure that we can provide them with whatever whatever they need. And we'll do it for as long as we can, and for as long as they need it. Mm. 
Mm. To you and all that you are helping and serving, uh, Jonathan Ornstein, uh, Happy Easter and Passover. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now to the war in Ukraine and the many ways our community is helping. Last week, we told you how a Central Florida rabbi went to Poland to help Ukrainians make their way across the border. And tonight, Gail Pascal Brown spoke with him about what he has seen and how he's helping. It's a story you'll only see on West 2. Those women coming across the border with those children, that, that crushes your heart knowing that they had to leave their home with a suitcase, one suitcase. Rabbi Stephen Engel of the Congregation of Reform Judaism in Orlando is in Krakow, Poland, working with 30 other rabbis from across the country, bringing much needed supplies. He brought more than 80,000 pills from Advent Health Orlando. There are, there are people who have died on the other side because they're diabetics and they didn't have enough medicine. Once the refugees step across the border, there are tents set up with help from almost every organization imaginable. I went to a warehouse where there were 300 baby strollers just piled up for the women that were coming across who had no baby strollers. This is a picture of the menu of all the services being offered from psychologists to veterinarians. I saw one little boy carrying his hamster. He carries hamster all the way from Kiev, on foot, all the way to Poland. After the tents, he says the Ukrainian refugees are taken by bus about a mile away to a huge mall where there's food, childcare, and more. The sadness and the pain, I, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. I mean, to look at, and, and what broke my heart the most was seeing those kids, little babies. But what inspired this Jewish leader is all the help in Poland. Poland was one of the worst places for Jews during the Holocaust. And all of the constant made their death camps during the Holocaust, they were in Poland. But seeing what the Polish people are doing today, it's a miracle. Still, he says, more supplies are needed. But they don't have enough food in Poland to, to do enough. They don't have enough medicines. They don't have enough diapers. He says you can't fathom the suffering that's going on here, nor understand who's helping until you see it firsthand. I'm Gail Pascal Brown, West 2 News. Hang on. <coughs> that's why. Okay. Should I start? Hi everybody! It's Claire here. Today I'm going to sing a little song. It's called To Make You Feel My Love by Adele. When the rain is blowing in your face and the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear I could hold you for a million years to make you feel my love. I know you haven't made your mind up yet, but I
of regret. The winds of change are blowing wild and free. You ain't seen nothing like me yet. I could make you happy, make your dreams true there's nothing that I wouldn't do go to the ends of the earth for you to make you feel my love to make you Thanks so much for watching this video, everyone. Goodbye!